grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus' disciples imagine that they are free, autonomous people. And having chosen to follow Jesus, they imagine the day will come when they are enthroned in glory with Jesus, ruling over nations with armies and treasuries at their disposal. James and John, as much as request that Jesus certify this for them, and the rest of the apostles, they're angry. Not because James and John, they think, got it wrong, but because it occurred to James and John to ask Jesus before it occurred to the rest of them to do so. But Jesus has a different idea of what the kingdom of God is like. In Jesus' vision, it has to do with drinking the cup of suffering and death. In Jesus' vision, greatness is equal to servanthood. In Jesus' vision, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And why? Because the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, as we hear in, in a little later in Hebrews, has shown us what the kingdom of God looks like. And Jesus here says, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the life that our Lord Jesus models for us. This is the life to which he invites us, each and every one of us, to be servants, humble servants. Well, this kind of life, it goes against so much of how we understand who we are in the world in which we live. We want to be promoted. We want to be praised. We want to rise in prestige. We long for the respect of others. And actually, who here ever played King of the Hill as a child? Yeah. What was the point of that? To stand higher than anyone else, right? No matter what it took to get there, how much push, pushing and shoving and once in a while, my brother kicked. But, you know, no matter what else it took to get there or to stay there, I think I can understand James and John. Well, Jesus doesn't slam these brothers. The other disciples aren't too happy, as I've said. But Jesus uses their question as an opportunity here in Mark's gospel to teach, to redefine greatness. He shows them a new scale of values. The one who has risen in status in life is not the king of the hill. That title belongs instead to the one who dedicates time, gifts, talents, and goods to serving those in need. Following on the heels of last week's gospel lesson that compared a rich man getting to heaven to a camel going through the eye of a needle, we might just need to listen. We might need to take Jesus' point. Especially in light of his own humility, his own selfless service, to the point of giving his own life in favor of all of humanity. That, by the way, doesn't deserve it. We ought to pay attention. Our stewardship verse this year is where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For James and John, sitting at Jesus' right and left hands when he had risen to glory, it seemed like a treasure chest worth securing. They bought into that portion of Jesus' prediction. They skipped right past the suffering and dying part, like we present-day Christians are also sometimes want to do. 
they and we need to hear again and again how Jesus says we are to spend, spend our time, our talents, our goods. We are to put all our resources, he tells us, into being servants. Because for those of us who love Jesus and who want to do his will, that is clearly his will. Be a servant. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Myself in the side of the moon. Jesus sacrificed himself on our behalf. And in his resurrection, he has overcome all the powers of Satan and of death for us. So that we also may be raised up. Moreover, he continues to intercede on our behalf at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Jesus isn't just up there in heaven, though. He's also present with us here in every moment in our earthly lives. He communicates with us through scripture, in the Holy Supper, in our prayers, in our devotions, in our Bible studies, in our hymns, even occasionally in a sermon. But not only in these ways, within these walls. He also communicates in our conversations with other people, on the streets, in the workplace, in in schools, and even in the media. Through these conversations, he opens our eyes and ears and puts our hands and our feet in motion for justice, for God's shalom, for people nearby and far away, for animals, for plants, for the waters and the air that our health and our lives require. What if, what if we truly treasured being a servant? I just wonder, what if? Amen. Amen.